as we all trust the Lord to come in a mighty way, in a special way. It starts off with the declaration. It's about God moving. So if we must see revival and the revival that will continue, we better cling, 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 so that new life can be new life. Hallelujah. This is a day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm happy again to be before you, even to have this opportunity to share the word of God with you. And the Lord has continued to encourage me even as I share this message. And uh, even before we continue, let's pray and trust God. Father, in Jesus' name, again, we thank you so much that you have given us another opportunity to hear your word, O oh God, to give us encouragement, O oh God, to guide us and lead us as you will of our lives, O oh God. And so we surrender ourselves fully to you and ask you to reign in our hearts and minds, O oh God. Let your name be exalted in what we say, in what we do. Let the kingdom of God prosper even through our lives. We bless you and exalt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, my name again is Isaac, uh, Pastor Isaac Muriuki and Crisco Church Umoja. I love the Lord. The Lord is my keeper and he is my good God. And today I rejoice again to share this message. I have shared for you previously, and it is a uh, message is uh, salvation for the whole house, salvation for the whole house, not for one person, not one individual. You are there in your family, you're the only one, you're crying, maybe you're young in salvation, you're saying, I'm the only one. And I want to encourage you that it's the will of God that one day you'll say, all of us together are no Christ, no all of us are saved. So be encouraged. We saw in our last sharing that the Lord is encouraging us that he is God who wants to save the whole family. And he did so for the jailer, the prisoner, uh, the prison keeper where Paul and Silas were jailed. He, he saved the whole family. He saw that God is also a God of family. He was concerned about the life of Noah and he saved the whole family of Noah. God is still today declaring that he is a God of family and not of individuals. Now we're going to the very interesting part of our teaching. And the question is, what should we do? What is our role in our families? Are there things we can do in our families that will discourage our members to know Christ? Are there things we can do in the family that will encourage our members, the members in the family to know Christ? Are, th are there things we can do within our families and ensure that our family members come to the knowledge of Christ? This is what we are going to share today. Number one, what is our role in the salvation of our relatives? Number one, have faith. I want to encourage us, have faith. As I gave my story, the first time I heard this from a preacher who said he labored for 15 years for every member in their family to be born again. And I got this. And I said, it's also possible that family members, our family members can also be saved. And it took about nine good years, nine good years um, before every member of our family. Is it nine good years? Yes, about nine good years when um, our, all members of our family, about 10 years or so, got saved. So it can be, it is possible for you and you can believe you have to have faith. But let's get to the word of God. And you know that uh, God encourages us to have faith. For without faith, we cannot please him. For without faith, we cannot do much. We cannot achieve much. So without faith, that's why I'm preaching to you that you may have this faith that if you have not thought this way, have faith, it is possible. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter 11 and verses 22 and 24. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Have faith in God. For assuredly, I said to you, Whoever says to this mountain, be lived and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. God has limited us to our faith, or has released our, our blessings according to our faith. Remember, Jesus would uh, speak to people, let it be to you according to your faith. 
Do we have faith that members of our church, I mean, members of our family cannot be born again? Some could be even selling alcohol. Maybe they have the clubs, they own alcohol. Some could have even been lost in the old cut. They are your enemies. Actually, you fear them because you don't know whether they would wish to sacrifice you. I want to encourage you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God would want to use you and to be a blessing. Have faith. Without faith, it is impossible. Without And the Bible says, verse 24, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, whatever things you ask, and when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them, whatever things you ask. So if you're asking for these dear ones, that they would come to the kingdom of God, don't just do it as a religious act. Don't just do it because other people are doing it. Just have faith it is possible. And Lord, the Lord will lead you. He'll give you the, 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 the way, the, the secret, the, the, the strategy to pray for your members. And Lord, the Lord wants to deliver all of it. Remember the Bible says, without faith, in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if you don't have faith that your members can be born again, your family members can be born again, don't even waste your time. They will not be born again. But when you have faith in God, as you pray and call upon the name of the Lord, he'll hear and he'll do great and mighty things. And the Bible also says in James 1, 6, that without God, God is a, your faith without action is dead. So don't just have faith that they'll be born again and not take action. Take action. Declare it. Speak with your mouth. The words we speak, the words we speak are awesome. The words we speak, they bear fruit. They are spirits and they mold, they create in the atmosphere and they create good things. Speak those positive things and uh, have faith and you shall see by and by uh, that uh, your people, go, your family members will start to be born again. Have faith in God. Number two, number two. Uh, the Bible says, be the good example. Brethren, this is one of the very important things that we must do in our lives. If you wish that your family members will come to Christ, for heavenly sake, may the Lord help you to be a good example. What are we saying? You cannot be fighting with your members in the family and then expect them to come to Christ. And you're the one exchanging words with them. You, you, where do you want to wao? Because they have hurt you. Because they have abused you. Because they have done some evil things. So you come there very annoyed and even uh, speaking uh, curses to them. And expect that one day they will come to Christ. Forget it. You, may God, by his grace, help you to be the example. Even um, when they when they, they, they hurt you, when they do say evil things against you, do not get back to them. May you have the grace, grace to go through all and be the example. Finally, they'll say, mm, our brother, oh, our sister, even when we were so negative towards him or her, she held on. They'll remember when the, the, the Lord will minister to them, they will not have anything to come to stand against, I mean, against you for what you did. The Bible says in the Matthew, book of Matthew, chapter 5, it's a good area to read. Chapter 5 and verse 16, it says, In the same way, in the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Let your light so shine. So is your light shining? You are the one who is known Christ first. Is your light shining? What would your brother say about you? What would your sister say about you? What would your parents say about you? What would your children say about you? And may the Lord help us. I remember this young man. He was asked why we kind of doubt salvation. And he, 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 he said things that were very heartening. He says, I don't see my fathers, my parents live what they portend to be. My parents, who are pastor, pastor and his wife, see, my parents, they can live, live a double life. What they 
preach is not what they are doing at home. So let me tell you, somebody said, preach, and if necessary, use words. So we are supposed to preach more by what we do than the words we speak. Let these children glorify God for you. Let them say, I, me, I, I, I failed, but my father, my sister is a good example. Be the example. The Bible says in the book of 1 Peter, the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, and verse 12, live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visits us. Let live such good lives. Sometimes it's not easy. I can encourage you. It's not easy. Sometimes they'll come in all ways. They'll rise against you. They'll abuse you. They'll say you are selfish. They'll say you're not concerned about other people. They'll speak many obscenities about you. But how do you behave? How do you respond back? Do you fight again? Some again will come to you or you in, in, into things of sin. How is your demeanor? How is the way you carry yourself? Are you competing with your brothers and sisters in the ways of dressing, the ways of the world? Are you competing with them in keeping up with the trends and fashions of the world? Then there's nothing. There. Your light is not shining. It's being dimmed. Let your light so shine. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you, they will still remember your good deeds. The Bible also says in the book of John 15 and verses 8, This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. It is, we are called upon ourselves. We are called upon us to show God's glory, to show the masses of God. The many stories I've heard of people who got born again, and especially when they got born and again, they didn't have resources, they didn't have, mater they didn't have material resources. And their family members were rich people with a lot of um, money. And they were demined. They were abused. They were ignored. But as they held strong, God lifted them up to a level that at, at later in life, they became the, the voice in the family. They were the ones being sought for advice. They are the ones being sought for counsel over time. But they have had, they, they had to show a good example. They had to live a godly life that the Father is a priest with that. Um, similarly, we should be called, we are called to pray for our family members. Pray for them. Let me tell you that the powers of darkness would want to resist the salvation of our relatives. But as we pray day after day, as we call upon the name of the Lord day after day, and present these relatives to God, rebuking the demons and the powers of darkness that have held our relatives captive, in drunkenness, in prostitution, in drugs, in religions, that are ungodly, and all manner of ungodliness, God is faithful. God is faithful. He will hear your cry and will come to your rescue. I, I sure remember uh, those days. One thing I want to tell any of, one of us listening to this, that God is keen to listen to a prayer that is done out of love. If you have no love for your family members, and God, of course, can see in your heart that you're just praying as a religion. You don't have true love. So even as you pray, you're praying from the top of your head, not from the depth of your heart. I can assure you, you're not going to get much result. But when you pray out of deep love, out of deep concern for the ones you're praying for, calling them specifically their names, you're not just saying, oh God, save the members of my family. You know, and Christians were fallen victim of this many times. We just want to say general prayers. Mungu bariki watu familia yangu, bariki wale wako hospitalini, bariki wale wanasafili. 
no, sometimes God wants to be specific so that when he when you walk, when you he acts, you can tell when you he can tell that uh, surely this God worked on this one. And before in case I forget, I also want to tell you that even you harvest what you plant. You harvest what you plant. Even before you talk of your family members, do you preach to others? Or you are only concerned with your family members? Are you concerned about other members of the church, of, of the world? Are you praying for others outside your family circle? I discovered in those early times that as I served the Lord more closely, God also went behind my back to do great things in my family. I remember one time we were in the morning glory. And when we met in the morning glory, one of the members in the morning glory, as I was rejoicing in the Lord and saying, the Lord is good, and all that, the man came and told me, you should, I wish you knew what the Lord has done for your family. You would rejoice the more. He said, what? He said, your brother got saved yesterday. I led him to Christ. I said, wow, my, 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 that's awesome. Because God, as we serve him, he comes behind us to also do us good. What you plant is what you harvest. Uh, uh, the Bible says, the Bible says in the book of Matthew 17, uh, verses 14, it says, And when they came to the cloud and a man approached Jesus and knelt before him, the Lord uh, have mercy on my son. He said, he has seizures and is suffering great. He often falls in the fire into the water. He, uh, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. The Bible says, number 17, Oh, unbelieving and, uh, and perverse generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you, his disciples? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Bring the boy here to me. This is what the Lord is doing even today. He's asking you, bring that person who is not born again to me today. Bring him up to me. I'm willing. I'm able to save him. I'm able to deliver him. Bring up that son of, of yours. Bring up that daughter of yours. Oh, who has become a head. I mean, a pain in your, in, in, in your, in your toe. Bring that person to me. That's what the Lord wants. Jesus rebuked the demon. And it came out of the boy and he was healed from that moment. Bring that person to the Lord. Let's sacrifice the person. Let's put, mention the name of the person without fear and bring him to Jesus. Let's claim these people uh, because it is a desire of God. Demand your relatives. Demand your relatives. Ask God according to the shed blood. Remember, the blood is on the lintel. The fact that you're born again. By the very fact that you're born again, there is a difference in that home. The fact that you, you lift up the name of the Lord in your home. The fact that the blood of Jesus speaks on your behalf in your family. You, have a, you are a child of God. You have a right to claim this according to the covenant of God as we, as we saw before. You have the right to claim that these members of your family will also come to the knowledge of Christ. Awesome God. Be ready. The other thing we are saying here is that um, not just uh, 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 praying and uh, preaching, we should be keen in the name of the Lord to, uh, to intercede. Sometimes it calls for us even to the, go to the level of fasting and praying for our members. Fasting and praying for our members. I, some of us do not have the discipline. Some, some of us are not willing to go all the way. And I remember, like, give a story again. <clears throat> uh, by, by God's grace, three members I, of my family got saved through, I led them. I led three members of my family at Christ. Uh, my sister, my father, and one of my brothers. And I remember like when my sister got born again, I led her to Christ late in the evening. Late, it was around mid, I mean, going to midnight. We were out in the time of Christmas. And what my sister did not know that just within that time of near Christmas, I was fasting and praying for her. I was trusting God for the salvation of my sister. And when I called upon her, 
to receive Jesus, there was no much resistance. She received Jesus. God is looking to you. How far are you willing to go to ensure the salvation of your members? How much are you willing to sacrifice for the salvation of your people? The people of the heathen and the worldly, they do so much sacrifices for whatever they get. But for you, how willing to sacrifice? Not the material things. Not the shedding blood. The, the blood of Jesus is enough. But how are you willing to seek the Lord, even concerning your family members? How willing are you going to pay the cost? There's a cost to pay. The cost of prayer. Consistent prayer. And the Lord will guide you along times, sometimes. What do you need to do? What, what are you willing to give for your brother? What are you willing to give for your sister? What are you willing to give for your parents? But don't be cheated, ladies and gentlemen. That some of us who have reached the point talked of the grace. The grace. It was time of grace. So in times of grace, it's kind of you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pray. You don't have to fast. You don't have to pray much. No, let's learn from the disciples of Jesus. They were in the time of grace. Were they fasting? Read the scriptures. Read the scriptures. Were they passing through issues? Yes. Were they, were they uh, praying much? Read the scriptures. They are our examples. And so we should be careful to pray for our members in the name of Jesus Christ. Number, uh, we are saying number four, we are also saying be ready to teach and preach to our relatives and our, uh, our relatives on salvation. Be willing to preach to them. Be willing to teach them. Don't coerce people only to salvation. Tell them, oh, we should be saved. You're going to hell if you don't get saved. No, people do not respond to threats. People harden their hearts more when you show them threats. Let them see, let them feel the love of God. Tell them the truth about what the Bible says. The Bible, let the word work for itself. Tell people what God has promised in his, in his word. What does Jesus Christ die? Jesus Christ died for them. That so God so loved the world. The scripture still means valid. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Don't even try to think in terms of the words, what they really mean. But just say the words have they been written in the Bible. Let the words defend. Let the word of God defend itself. The word of God is life and it has power and authority. Let that word speak to those people. Tell them that the Lord loves them. Tell them that the Lord wishes to do them good. Give them hope of tomorrow. And when they hear these words, be willing to teach them. I remember that this day when my father got born again, we had had a family uh, meeting again over Christmas. And I was ministering to them as a, in the family. And I called upon my father and asked, Dad, uh, you know the Lord has loved you so long and uh, he has been good to you. My God, dad had stopped drinking for many years but had not received Jesus. I told him, Dad, you know what the Lord did for you for 10 years? You have not, uh, you have not been drinking. Uh, God delivered you from that. Would you want to give your life to Jesus? He said, yeah, I would want to do that. And he did that. And he has held on. He has stood in Christ. Let's be willing to teach them. Te be willing to preach to them. Don't just leave them to preachers sometimes who are not really loved. But they can trust you more when, because when they see you as an example, they can trust you more. Um, another thing, the other thing, the other thing we're saying is that uh, we have a right to demand our members from the kingdom of darkness on the account of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The fact that Jesus Christ is our Lord and the shed blood of our Lord Jesus Christ speaks on our behalf. We have a right to demand. We have a right to claim this blood to work and speak on behalf of our family members. As it was the blood speaking on the lintels of the children of Israel, the blood of Jesus Christ is also upon us and our I mean within us and where we are. We are the light. We carry God with us. Wherever we are, we carry the Lord with us. We are not like without influence. Where we are, we carry our Lord Jesus. We carry our Father. The kingdom of God is where we are. We have a right to demand these people. 
and call upon God to deliver them, to, to, to bring them unto salvation. The Bible says in Psalms 2, 8, that um, ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and, uh, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Brethren, there is the asking. Don't be over religious and just assume it is just business as usual. Let it be, let it be asking. Ask of God. And the Lord is more than willing to do that. Ask of Him. Let's ask without uh, giving up. Let's ask without looking back and have faith and wait on the Lord. And not only once, many times, consistently. May God give us grace, me and you, not to give up on our family members. May we have the wisdom on how to best uh, uh, approach them because God is faithful. But again, I want to warn you. Sometimes the Lord will discourage you. I remember like uh, the, with the time my father was quitting uh, alcoholism. I had, God had led me to fast for a number of days. Uh, a serious fast without food. It's water. And on the day he arrived in the evening, he came very drunk. He came home very drunk. And actually when he looked at us, he was just crying. Imagine your father crying before your wife and looking dirty and all that. Ah, and it was almost like discouraging. What have I been doing? Have I been fasting for nothing all these days? And it was Christmas time. Imagine not eating during Christmas time when there's so much food and sweet food. But I didn't comment. I didn't see anything. The Lord was merciful. And believe you me, that was the last alcohol my father took. Had took by then. He never took it again to date. Then the last alcohol that my father took. And he was delivered from that demon of alcoholism. I want to encourage you, my sister. I want to encourage you, my brother. I want to encourage you, you wife of somebody who is not born again. I want to encourage you, you husband of a woman. A wife who is not born again. You've been born again. Your wife has not yet born again. She's still maybe in the religion. Don't give up on God. Don't give up. Claim this soul unto Christ. Your children have not been showing the honor of your God. Don't lose hope. Don't give up. God is faithful. May it be your portion that your whole household, your whole household will be saved. Let's again conclude with the word of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, again, we thank you for this word. It's an encouragement to us, Lord, that you desire to save us and our whole family. Not only ourselves, Lord, but the whole family. Let it be our portion, O God. Let it be upon us, Lord, that we shall celebrate together. When we come to you, Lord, we shall be with our whole families, our children, even our grandchildren. Even brothers and sisters will come, will come, Lord, and rejoice together. We will not leave our children to be destroyed and, and messed up by the world, but we shall take uh, we shall take responsibility and work with you, O oh God, to ensure that they are saved. Bless you, Lord. Bless the listeners, O oh God. This is the word bear fruit in their lives. May they rejoice in you, O oh God, when they see their family members start to receive Christ. Oh Father, we bless you and exhort you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.